Yep, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Just Alex Show. It's me, your host, Just Alex, aka your favorite community college dropout with opinions. How y'all doing today, man? You doing good, looking good, smelling good, hope you're feeling good. Oh, man, boy, it's been a minute. It has been a minute. I done dusted the podcast equipment off and then jumped back in the studio, goddamn. I feel like I ain't recorded in about three weeks. I think my last episode with uh, Rudy, we recorded that shit on like a Saturday or something. And then didn't uh, release that until the next Thursday. So, my nigga, it has been a minute since I recorded this. I apologize for yelling. Let me let me tone this shit down a little bit. I apologize. I apologize. But it has been a minute since I recorded. Uh, let me see. After the episode with Rudy, um, I took a little hiatus. And <clears throat> I went to Dreamville that week, the following weekend. No, the weekend after two weeks after uh the last episode with rudy i went to uh dreamville so hey fuck we just go i'm just gonna jump into the shits because uh, my nigga it's been some shit happening and i got opinions so y'all already know i'm gonna get to this shit uh so yeah let's see after the shortly after the uh the episode with rudy i did i went to the uh dreamville fest and uh, it was it was fun, man. It was it was fun. I, I really had a good time. I seen a couple of people, seen a couple of uh, classmates actually, a couple of high school classmates that was there. Also, I ran into and finally met in person my nigga Jalon, uh, Jalon Abrams. Uh, I know him from we met on, well, we got cool or whatever on uh like Instagram and Twitter and shit. And uh, I know I talked about a couple couple episodes ago i talked about my episode on his podcast that was uh that we had done but hadn't came out yet and i meant to come back in and talk about it after it uh dropped but i think it slipped my mind or whatever so uh go definitely go check me out on his show it's called uh unknown and talented with jalon abrams uh it's a new podcast that he started a couple weeks or so ago it may be a month or so now um, but uh, he's got he's got about a, he's got a handful of episodes, so you know what I'm saying I fuck with I fuck with bro, and uh, it was good to uh, it was good to actually meet him in person. I'm <laughs> I'm kind of sitting on a the, where I'm parked at. I'm kind of sitting on a hill right now, so I'm like slumped over and shit. So I'm trying to sit up straight, but the way the truck is sitting right now, I can't actually sit up straight, and it's kind of fucking with my my posture on camera and. I can't have Joe Budden seeing my shit and saying that I'm slouching down and shit like that because I'm already holding my mic and he he got a problem with that. But we we go we go get into that shit a little later. But uh yeah, finally met my man uh, Jalan in person. Uh it, that was cool. Uh, talked to him for a quick little minute. Um, <clears throat> like then like I said, I ran to a couple other people that I know and whatnot that was out there. Uh, but for the most part, um. For the most part, uh, I was I was really really just thugging out by myself and just whoever the fuck was around me at the festival because I didn't really go with anybody. But I did, like I said, met a couple of people that I knew that was out there, and also met some people that was there. I also I got to talking to uh, one of the event. Uh, I don't I don't want to say security guards, but he was like the event staff, and uh, found out that Brad did does music. I actually, make two or three people out there who do do music and from North, the North Carolina area. So. Uh, maybe uh, we could get a couple of podcast episodes out of the people that I met there. This this sitting on this hill shit is really fucking with me right now because I don't I can't figure out how to get comfortable to uh to really get into my groove. You know what I'm saying? But we finna figure it out. But uh, yeah, met a couple of people to do some music and whatnot. So maybe and hopefully we'll get some uh we get some new guests on here sooner or later. But you know we'll see how that goes. Uh, as far as the festival. Excuse me. As far as the festival goes, though, uh, it was it was it was fun. It was really fun. It was my first time going since the very first one, which was in two thousand eighteen, nineteen, two thousand nineteen, I believe, somewhere along in there. But uh, I went to the very first Dreamville Fest, and there has been two in between the first one and this last one, I believe. No. I think it was just one because that year that the hurricane came through, I think it got canceled. It's been one or two. I can't remember. I want to say it's been two. 
anyways, uh, this so yeah, this is my second Dreamville. Um, it was it was dope. It was it was fun. Uh, I'm gonna say the first day, the first day for me personally, it wasn't it wasn't all that that much uh to see, because I didn't really care for you know too many of the acts because, as far as the uh of course it's the Dreamville festival, so the main artist is performing are artists on Dreamville and <laughs> they really haven't put out any new music um since the last well they they've put out some new music but i that that fucking gangster grill shit that they put out i'm not really fucking with that so i'm not even too pressed on seeing none of that shit be performed uh it, it may be one or two songs off of there that I, I i do fuck with but as far as seeing them live the only one i can think of is a uh, stick with jid and uh j cole but Outside of that, uh, I've seen everybody on Dreamville perform, uh, number one, at the Dreamville Fest, and then two, just at different concerts in general. So for the most part, as everybody on, as far as everybody on Dreamville goes, I know the songs that everybody's going to do, and I know and have seen them multiple times. Um, so as far as uh, the first day, like I was saying, the only person out that I was really there to see the first night um, definitely Lil Dirk, cause he went on. He was the, I know, cause Usher. Cl- let me look at the. Let me look at the fucking lineup actually, <clears throat> so I can um. If I just get the, get the spewing, spewing bullshit. Uh, let me see. So yeah, the first night. Um, who did I see? I seen Loot, which I've seen him multiple times. Uh, so I watched Luke, uh, Jesse Reyes, who I th- <laughs> Jesse Reyes. I thought I knew Jesse Reyes, or thought I knew at least a a handful of her songs. But I think I got her confused with somebody else because she got up there and she started singing her songs and whatnot, and they was cool songs. You know what I'm saying? Like if she had like a a live band with her, so you know what I'm saying they was cool songs and everything. But um, outside of this song that she got with Black. The um, what is it called? How my how my name is, what what's the name of that song? How my name is not uh imported. I think is the name of it. How my name is not imported. I'm not from here. I'm not going. To, yeah, that shit right there. Outside of that song, I didn't know no none of the Jesse Reyes songs, fast. So they kind of blew me because, like I said, going into it when I seen her name, I think it's because I recognize her name and I seen her name so much that. I kind of just assumed that, okay, I know, you know what I'm saying, a handful of her songs. but um, So, yeah, I, I did see her. I wanted to go see uh, Sir, but he came on. Uh, I, I think I forgot when he came on and I missed his set or whatever because uh, he came on right after Loot, and I went to go get me something to drink or something like that. And then I looked at the schedule and shit. I was like, fuck, they, Sir is on right now, and by the time – I would have even um, got from the drink stands because I, I, I didn't realize, the first time I went, I didn't realize how big that fucking park was, my nigga. That park is fucking huge, fam. Um, so, yeah, I walked over uh, right after Loot set and went and got me something to drink. And by the time I would have got back to the, uh, what by the time I got from Loot set to the drinks that was all the way on the other side of the fucking field, and then got to the stage where Sir was at, which was all the way on the other stage. I, I was like, "Yeah, that's, it's not even, it's not even to be fucking worth it." So I just went back. <coughs> I went to. Uh, I ended up going to. <coughs> shit, my fault, y'all. They had some little tent set up. It was uh, either Google or Android. I want to say they had some type of uh, shit set up. To where that was displaying, uh, cause it, of course it's been the, the fifty year, fiftieth anniversary of hip hop for like the past three years or so. So anytime anybody throws a hip hop festival or show or something like that, they gotta have the fifty year anniversary of hip hop uh, display shit. So Google had their shit set up where they was advertising some type of phone or something like that, and um, around it they had this little photo booth shit where you could get in and they had like this green screen where you could take pictures and um pi- you could take pictures in front of the green screen they had these little like shirts and stuff 
to replicate different um album covers or whatever. So I know one of them was a uh, Childish Gambino's album where he's wearing that uh Hawaiian looking shirt. So they had this shirt. What if I you put that on and stand in front of a green screen? Of course, they make the backdrop, the uh the rest of the album cover. And then uh, Dr. Dre's The Chronic was one of them. Um, it was one more. Chance the Rapper's Acid Rap album cover was one of them, I believe. And it was maybe a handful of other ones, but it was like, I kind of <laughs> I kind of wanted to, to do that shit, get a picture, because they had a bunch of different sizes and shirts and whatnot, the little outfits and shit that you needed to do the album covers, but... I thought about that shit, and I was like, my nigga, it's probably been a thousand motherfuckers that come through here and put all these shirts on and whatnot. I'm like, I'm not finna put this shit on right now, fam. I'm already taking a, a chance at a, a new strand of COVID being out this bitch in the first place. I'm not finna overly risk this shit by wearing fucking a shirt or a T-shirt or whatever the fuck that a thousand other motherfuckers have put on. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, yeah, I ended up not doing that, but I did get to uh, look around at some of the other stuff that they had on display, which was just, uh, they had, like, a couple plaques and whatnot that had, um, they had a couple plaques that had, like, you know, just a little bit of history of different things. They had, uh, some. it was somebody's, I think it was, like, Snoop Dogg's uh, jacket or something that they had from, like, Doggy Style or something like that. It it was some it was some pretty interesting shit. It was, like, some hip-hop nerd type shit, but it was pretty cool. Uh, so, let me see. After that, um, I stayed over towards the, the stage where Dirk was going to be performing. So, I ended up seeing Earth Gang was next, I believe. Yeah, I ended up seeing Earth Gang. And uh, Earth Gang got on stage and... <coughs> <coughs> shit, I don't know what the fuck is going on right now. But uh Earth Gang got on stage <coughs> and um I don't know how it sounded to <coughs> everybody at home, but uh to us that was actually to us that was at the festival, Earth Gang's um music was fucked up when they first came out. First well first when they first came out the whole audio shit was fucked up. So we couldn't hear them and we couldn't hear the music or nothing. And then they finally fixed whatever was going on to where we couldn't hear them. So now we could hear them, we could hear them rapping, but we couldn't hear none of the fucking music. And so they halfway through they set, and uh, Olu goes, "Y'all can't even hear, y'all can't even hear us, can you?" We was like, "No, fam, we can't hear shit." Oh, we was like, "We can hear you, but we can't hear the fucking music." So they ended up doing like maybe two or three more songs, and uh they still didn't realize that we still couldn't hear the music, but we could still hear them. And we could kind of hear the music, but it was, like, very, very low. So um, eventually they got that shit fixed, though. And uh, it, it still ended up being a good performance because they still do a, they do a great live show because they don't even use the, uh, <clears throat> they don't even use the MP3s, the MP3 tracks. So a lot of artists, when they perform, they use the, they just play the, <clears throat> God damn. <clears throat> my bad, y'all. I really don't know what, what is going on. Something jumped down my throat. Pause. Hey, yo. <laughs> but um, what was I saying? Uh, Earth Gang. Oh, uh, most most performers, when they do uh, live shows or live performances and whatnot, they rap over the MP3 version of the song. But Earth Gang... They rap over the instrumentals and actually rap the whole fucking song. So uh, it was, like I said, it was still a dope show, even though we couldn't hear him for the first half of this shit. But it still ended up being a good performance. And that was also my, what, third or fourth time seeing Earth Gang. So outside of one or two songs off uh, their latest EPs and whatnot, I had heard. Again, I had seen their set already. Know they set, but it was still fun, though. It was still fun. I ain't got no complaints. Uh, let me see. After that, uh, Sean Paul was at the other stage, and I wasn't really, I wasn't really too uh too up on Sean Paul like or too pressed on seeing Sean Paul like that. Uh, and then the City Girls, <laughs> the City Girls is actually entertaining. I was kind of, I kind of walked away from the stage to uh, I think I went to use the bathroom that time, so I walked away from the stage. So I kind of watched that shit from afar, but that shit was still 
still kind of entertaining. They they started to do um. They played uh Lil Uzi's "I Just Want to Rock" shit, and everybody thought that uh Lil Uzi was gonna come out, but it was just JT on stage dancing and whatnot. So um that w- that was still fun though. It was still entertaining. Uh, but then. We finally get to uh, Lil Dirk because I didn't go see Ari. I wasn't really – I think what it really was, like, I, I kind of wanted to go see Sir, but once I seen, you know, say I had already missed the beginning of his set, and then I had to walk all the way across the fucking park, I was like, yeah, I'm cool on that. And then uh, after after the City Girls, Ari was on, on the opposite stage. But, number one, I, I've already seen Ari, like, what? three three times yeah i've already seen ari like three times and fam i really just wasn't feeling the r&b that night bro because i didn't even stay for because uh the first night usher closed out i didn't even stay for usher my nigga like (laughs) after after uh dirk went up i fucking left dog like it was me and half the fucking crowd left i don't know i don't know how this shit might have looked on the uh I think it was Amazon and stream that shit. I don't know how this shit might have looked on the Amazon stream. But my nigga, after Dirk performed, half the fucking crowd left, my nigga. Like that it was it was a it was a a good amount of people in the crowd left right after Dirk got off stage. So uh But yeah, uh back to what I was saying. I wasn't really feeling the R and B vibes uh the that first night. I don't I don't know. I really don't know what it was. I really ain't give a fuck about none of the R and B artists that performed uh, outside of Jesse Reyes, and she just so happened to be on the stage that I was already standing at, and I was just like, "All right, I'm gonna check her out." And like I said, I thought I knew more of her songs than I actually did, but to my surprise, I only knew like one or two of them shit. So, uh, but let me see Dirk's performance. Uh, this, this is my first time seeing Dirk live, and it was it was good. <clears throat> it was really good. I know a lot. I know a lot more Dirk songs than I actually thought I did just off of, I don't know, maybe hearing them shits on either TikTok or playlists or just being out somewhere or something like that. I actually know a lot more words to a lot more Dirk songs than I thought I did because I thought this nigga was going to do one or two songs off that uh, little the shit that he got with Lil Baby and it was going to be really the only songs that I really knew like that. But turns out I know uh, quite – quite a bit of uh quite a bit of Dirk's lyrics quite a bit more of Dirk's lyrics than I actually thought I did but overall the first day was first day was pretty chill it was pretty fun I did a little <clears throat> a little more exploring as far as uh the the festival grounds in general this year because the first year I went I and the first year I went I don't even know if they had all the stuff that they had this this time because I seen a lot more of the the murals and shit that they had up, but um, it could have been they could have they could have redone some things as far as you know who gets who gets to see what because I know when I the first year the first couple years maybe the only way you could see the little Dreamville sign, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> was at the uh, in the VIP shit. So I think they rearranged some shit. As far as uh, how many murals they had, number one and number two, who had access to them. So uh, I did, like I said, get to do a little more exploring and seeing some more of the shit that they had, the statues and whatnot, the Ferris wheel. I think the Ferris wheel was new. I think that was brand new because I don't ever remember motherfuckers talking about the Ferris wheel being at that shit. But uh, it was like the Ferris wheel. They had like a water tower shit. They had this big um, this big mural of... Uh, uh j cole's house like the roof or whatever and you could go motherfuckers taking pictures on that and shit but uh overall it was cool overall it was cool i spent like i got one drink and then i got one drink a slushy and then a bottle of water that shit was like sixty dollars or some shit my nigga that them motherfuckers out there fucking taxing you hear me uh so let but let me see moving on to the second day the second day for me was a lot more a lot more uh what I was looking for. I actually ended up getting there late as fuck because I left the house late. I drove back and forth each day, so I left the house late the second day, but I also didn't really care about nobody up until 
like four o'clock, I think. I got there right. I got there a little bit before uh, Waka went on stage because, uh, I don't even know the motherfuckers that was performing before. What is this? Three o'clock. I didn't even know like that. Uh, Kaz, other than Kaz and Baby Tatum, Kaz, I didn't seen him. I didn't seen him like three times too, and. He outside of the mixtape shit, he definitely ain't put out no new music. Baby Tate, I don't really even I know her name and I know she looked good on Instagram, but outside of that, I don't really know no Baby Tate songs. I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. So them the only two that before three o'clock that I knew about or I knew anything about. So after that is Aria Star. Don't know who the fuck that is. Uh, and then it was Mario or Mario, however the fuck you want to say his name. And again, I just was not in the mood for no R and B shit, fam. Like I don't R and B at a festival. I guess it's cool depending on. I guess R and B at a festival is kind of like if it's an R and B festival. All right, cool. But if it's an R and B and hip hop festival, my nigga, I'm not finna stand in front of no. I'm not finna. No, my nigga, I'm not. I'm, I don't care to stand out here and see these fucking. Uh, how can I? I don't feel like seeing. How can I breathe right now, my nigga? Like I'm sorry, Mario. You killed it in your verses when you shitted on Omarion. But right now, my nigga, I don't. I don't care, dog. Like I really don't care if you say she is just a friend. Let her be a fucking friend, my, my nigga. Like I'm cool on that shit. So like I said, I got there right as <clears throat> right before uh, Waka Flocka went on. So I ended up seeing Waka Flocka. That nigga is hype, man. Walker's hype man was fucking wild. That was a wild ass nigga. This nigga had climbed up on the side of like where the uh the Amazon uh station was at. This nigga had climbed up on the fucking light pole or whatever the fuck you want to call it and was up there like swinging his arm down like he was fucking King Kong on top of the Empire State Building or some shit. Acting like he was finna jump off. And then Walker looked at the nigga. He was like, come on, bro. You can't get up. This how we be getting kicked out of places. That shit was funny as fuck. But that nigga was all over the fucking place. But Walker, Walker put on a, a, a hell of a show. He really shut this shit down. Uh, I, I believe that was my first. Yeah, that was definitely my first time seeing Walker live. So that was, that was definitely a good show. Uh, he did some. He did some throwback shit for sure. He brought out um, what's them niggas name? Travis Porter. Yeah, he brought out Travis Porter. They did they did their shit, but um, it was it was that was definitely dope. It was definitely dope to see uh to see that shit live. Uh, then after that, uh, the the second day, the first both days, I kind of just stayed at one day. So if you didn't know, Dreamville is two stages. So. Both days, I just stayed at one stage the whole time because uh, the first day, like I said, I was really on there to see Dirk and a handful. Dirk, uh, Loot, and other than that, Dirk, Loot, and uh, Earth Gang, that was really all I was there for the first day. And then the second day, and they was all on the same stage. And then the second day, all the people, only person I was there for to keep it a bug with you was J. Cole and Drake at the end of the night. But also on that same stage was supposed to be Glorilla, Summer Walker, but uh, and then of course and uh, Waka Flocka. But uh, after Waka Flocka, of course, Boz was on the other stage. But I didn't seen Boz before. He puts on a great show, but I was just like, I'm I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool where I'm at. I'm trying to get as close to the stage as I could. Uh, and then it came time for Glorilla set, and Glorilla just didn't show the fuck up, my nigga. Like the DJ, it was a random nigga that was DJ and got on stage. And just started DJing and playing songs. And then, like, halfway through his set, we everybody in the crowd was just like, yeah, Glorilla ain't coming. Because this nigga's up there just spinning random records. He ain't played not one of her songs. He ain't even said her name. He ain't asked, is, is y'all ready for uh, Big Glow or nothing like that. But uh, So, yeah, she ended up not coming out then. Uh, but uh, later on, Drake ended up bringing her out. So we still got to see her. Uh, then after Glorilla, J.I.D. was on the other stage. Uh, and then on the stage that I was at, Summer Walker came out. And she came out, and at first she was having problems with her uh, mic, uh, with her audio shit. But she, and when Summer performed, my nigga, she had the whole, she had a whole set stage, fam. Like her whole set, the uh, the whole stage 
how she had this shit set up was almost like a wedding type shit, my nigga. Like she had a couch, she had a, a dining table, she had a bunch of fucking flowers, bouquets, uh light fixtures, nigga had a fucking chandelier, I believe, up on that bitch. So her whole set design was was decked the fuck out and she got up there, she done her thing. Again, I ain't really care as far as the R and B shit, but I was already there because I was again trying to get as close to the state, close to the front as I could. So I was just I wasn't finna fucking move. But uh, she she actually she did put on a good show. She did she did put on a good show. I don't really see. There was a there was a a couple years ago. It was like what well, not even a couple years ago. This is like maybe last year, maybe the last two years or so. There was like a running joke on social media that Summer Walker puts on a bad live performance, and that has not been my experience with Summer Walker because I've seen her twice now, um, no, three times I believe. I've seen her two or three times, and every time I've seen her, it's not been bad, my nigga. It's been actually really fucking good because I've seen her. Uh, the first time I seen her was in Charlotte when she was on stay when she was on tour with uh Black. So this is when she was new, like she was new, new. I think she was, cause she was only doing maybe, uh, she only did like maybe a 10 minute set. And the only song she had was Girls Need Love 2, uh, CPR, and it was like maybe two more. So she, this was off her first EP type shit. Like this, this was early, early, my nigga. This was like 2000. When did Black come out? This was like 2016, 17, something like that. So this was early, early. Um, and then, uh, so I've only seen her twice. Yeah, so this was, like I said, 2016, 17, whatever the fuck, Black came out. And then this time was the only time that I've seen her live. But again, even when she first came out, uh, of course, everybody knows the, knows the fucking Girls Need Love 2 shit. So I knew that. And I think I'd already heard the EP, so I'd already heard some of her other songs, too. But either way, she put on a good show even back then. And then this time was even more, you know what I'm saying, over the top because she's more established now, of course, and she got a whole lot more songs. But she got out there and killed it. And she also ended up bringing out uh, Black at the end of her, at the tour, well, towards the end of her set. And he did two or three songs, so that was dope. And then uh, after... After Summer Walker finished up, uh, Burner Boy, I believe. Yeah. Burner Boy was on the opposite stage. And then we come back to the main event, which was J. Cole and Drake, of course. So J. Cole came out. He did his thing. Uh, he did really the same songs that he always did. I, and I kind of hate that you see an artist, well, especially at the festival, because he did – from what I remember, he did the exact same set that he did from the first Dreamville outside of when he brought out uh, the rest of the Dreamville cast and they did some of their songs that they got together that's off of the newer uh, the newer mixtapes. Other than that, he did the same couple songs that he does, that he always does on his shows. He did, um, <clears throat> actually, no, I take that back because he ended up doing he ended up doing something off of uh, Friday Night Lights that I can't think of the name of right now. Um, fuck, what is the name of this song? Um, was it Back to the Topic? I think it was Back to the Topic he did. And then it was one more off of either Friday Night Lights or the warm-up that he did. And then he also ended up doing his verse um that he has with Benny over one of the older beats that he rapped on one of the older Kanye beats he rapped on he did his verse that he got with uh Benny the Butcher off that song what the fuck is the name of that song John John something I don't fucking know I can't think of it right now but um yeah other than that he did the typical songs that he always does which is the uh, don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Uh, I think he did firing firing squad. I think he did. Uh, he closed the show out. With, yeah, this that, that was at the very end. He closed out with um, first thing first. Rest in peace, Uncle Phil. No role models. I think is the name of it. Um, yeah, for the most part, 
he did his basic set shit. So, uh, but I mean, it's still, it's still always a Cole always puts on a great show. I can say that he he does for the most part the the same song, but he do throw some a couple uh throwback shits in there. So that's always dope. But uh, of course, everybody was was waiting on Drake to come out. So Drake comes out. He finally brings out Drake. He does this whole thing where J. Cole does this whole thing where he's like, I think it's time. And then he introduces Drake. Drake comes out to Drake. What song did he come out to? I forgot. Damn, I forgot. I got terrible fucking memory. Honestly, it wasn't Jump, man. It was something off of, uh, I want to say it was something off of, off of, if you're reading this, it's too late, though. But uh, he came out to that. And then he did a couple of his regular. He actually, Drake actually done some, done some throwback shit too. I was kind of surprised at that, but uh, he done some throwback shit. He done, uh, he done Marvin's Room at one point. He did uh, Over It. He did. Uh, I want to say he done a couple, couple seconds of like, uh, un- no, not Underground Kings. What the fuck is the name of that song? Uh. Was it Tuscan Leather? He did. He did a couple. He did a couple seconds of some of his older shit that motherfuckers really be. Well, he's really rapping on type shit. But of course, like I said, it's only a couple seconds, so he cut the shit off before he really got into the shit. But uh, also throughout his set, he also brought out Lil Wayne when he did. Uh, he did Hell Yeah Fucking Right, and he brought out Lil. No, he did uh, the motto. That's when Wayne came out. He did the motto, and then Lil Wayne came out. We didn't even know uh, Wayne was on stage because how they had the stage set up, it was like smoky and whatnot, so you couldn't even see Wayne walking onto the stage. So by the time it got to uh, Wayne's verse, we just you could just hear somebody rapping over the the MP3 lyrics, and it's like, oh shit, this nigga's on stage. So that was a, that was a good surprise. And then Wayne stayed out there. He did a couple of his songs. He did uh, a Millie. Then he did Uproar. And then he did maybe one more, and then he got off stage. And then uh, Drake came back out. He did a couple songs, and then he brought out uh, Glorilla. So uh, Glorilla, Glorilla ended up coming out on Drake's set, and she did uh, "Fuck Nigga Free," and I think that was it. Yeah, cause she ain't do uh, she ain't do none of her other shit. She just did "Fuck Nigga Free." And then she left. And then after she left, Drake did a couple more of his songs. He he like I said, he actually did do some throwback shit. So it wasn't all like the new, the new shit that he got. It wasn't all fucking. Uh, if you read this, it's too late. All his hype shit. He actually done some some song some singy shit too. And like I said, he did Marvin's Room, and it was a uh, Marvin's Room. Did he do Find Your Love? I don't think he did Find Your Love. My memory is fucking terrible, my nigga. God damn. This shit was only a couple weeks. This Not even a couple weeks. Ago. This shit was last, what, last week? Yeah, this shit was last fucking week, and I can't even remember. Um, But, yeah, after after Glorilla came out, uh, Wayne came out, and then he also brought out Lil Uzi. Lil Uzi came out. He did his, uh, All My Friends Are Dead, and then he did I Just Want to Rock, and he was on stage dancing and shit for a little second. Um, and then what else? What else? What else? Oh yeah, towards the end of Drake being on stage, uh, Twenty One Savage came out, and then him and Twenty One they did Jimmy Cooks. Then they did uh, what's the what's the first song? The Twenty One. Can you do something for me? They he they done that shit. Uh, after like I said, after they did the Jimmy Crooks, Jimmy Crooks shit. Jim, is it Crooks or Cooks? whichever one it is they did that shit and then they did the uh the intro to um her loss uh rich flex and then they did they did one more they did one or two more off of uh off of uh her loss but um anyways overall it was great money i'm i'm not gonna hold you all the shit was great i kind of wanted to see them do uh jodeci freestyle but I kind of figured that they wouldn't because that's like a that's like a, a tucked away. That's that, that that's a you really got to know some shit to know some shit to know uh, uh, Jodeci freestyle. So 
Uh, I but I did still want them to do this shit, but I also kind of knew like, yeah, that's that's gonna be one. That's a deep cut. They not finna go into that shit. That niggas probably don't even remember the fucking words to that shit. But uh, <clears throat> overall, like I said, it was it was dope. It was, it was really dope. I I really had a good time. My fucking legs was hurting like a motherfucker. Do y'all hear me, dog? My fucking legs. My knee was goddamn. T- Listen, I already got a bad fucking knee thanks to my little brother. Uh, I, yeah, thanks to my little brother, I already got a bad fucking knee. So my shit was fucking hurt. Do you hear me, dog? And fucking just tired of standing and shit, bro. And then <laughs> funny shit, uh, I ended up losing the fucking car when I when I parked. So of course, with a festival or just a big event like that, you know, of course they block off half of the half of the surrounding area well the whole pretty much the whole surrounding area of where the festival was at so you had to park uh they had like designated parking at the at the school what school was right there uh uh i almost said a and t uh nc state so they had some designated parking at nc state but if you didn't buy a parking pass which the motherfuckers sold out quick as hell but if you didn't get a parking pass for NC State, you basically had to figure it the fuck out. So uh, the first night I ended up parking at this church because that was on a Saturday. So I ended up parking at this church and I had to walk like maybe maybe about a half a mile. Or so it wasn't that bad. But then the second day was was a Sunday. Of course, church is in service. So the, I couldn't park at the church. So I ended up having to park downtown type shit. So. But uh, where I parked at, it was it was downtown. It was fairly close, but my nigga, it was it was a good fucking walk from from uh compared to where I parked at the first day. So uh, I end up parking and I actually took a Uber because I was I was downtown, but I wasn't really downtown. Like I was I was close to downtown, but all the fucking uh parking spots was took between. Just regular downtown Raleigh Sunday afternoon traffic type shit, or just people being out brunch or whatever the fuck, to people actually parking down there for the festival and shit. And like I said, the second day I I did get there a lot later than <clears throat> a lot later than everybody else did. So it was what maybe two something when I actually got there and got parked, found somewhere to park. So. On the way to the festival, I ended up taking an Uber, which got me pretty much most of the way. And when I parked, my nigga, <laughs> I opened my my app, my Maps app on my phone, and I dropped a pin so I could remember which parking uh which parking area I was at. Right? Apparently, that shit didn't fucking save. So, uh, like I said, I took an Uber from where well about from where I parked at because. I guess because of the one way streets and whatnot in Raleigh, it had me it had me walk like maybe a block or so away from where I was actually parked at to take the Uber or to catch the Uber. So uh, I had to do that. So when I was leaving, of course, I'm not finna wait for Uber, my nigga, because between all the motherfuckers that's trying to catch Ubers to go wherever the fuck to just the surge price and all that shit number one that shit was gonna be expensive as fuck and number two i'm already be standing out there for like an hour hour and a half just waiting on a motherfucker to number one get a uber and then number two for that motherfucker to find me in the crowd of all the motherfuckers that was standing out there so i just took off fucking walking my nigga it's like it's this the last day i'm tired of shit i'm just ready to go the fuck home anyway so i took off walking and <laughs> Again, I put, I dropped the fucking pin, but the shit didn't fucking save it. I didn't find out, of course, until it was time to find the fucking car again. So now I'm walking back and trying to recognize the general area of where I was at. And, of course, I got there again. It was mid-afternoon type shit. Now it's uh, the end of the night, end of the festival. It's like, what, 12, 12, 1 o'clock at night because it's, it's a, it was what, like a 45-minute walk? No. It was like an hour walk from the festival grounds to where I parked it. And that was if it's a straight shot. But this is like 
This is an hour walk. And you got to walk in between and navigate your way out of a crowd of, what, 50,000 people that's all leaving at the same fucking time, trying to do the exact same thing, find their car, find their friends, get the fuck out of there. So the walk alone ended up taking like an hour and 30 minutes. So then after I walked an hour and 30 minutes and got to the general area because I ended up having to put in the uh, the the location from where I got picked up at the Uber. And thank God that shit saved because if that – if if I didn't have the fucking address to where I got picked up at by the Uber, I would have been just fucking lost, my nigga, walking around downtown Raleigh at fucking three o'clock in the morning trying to figure out where the fuck I parked at. But uh, I ended up, like I said, getting a, the location where I got picked up at earlier off the Uber app and got to the general area. My nigga, by the time I found the car, it was maybe an the the walk itself was like an hour and a half so i know i walked around just looking trying to find some shit that i recognized from before for a good another hour itself to the point where i was just like you know what fuck it i'm just i don't know what the fuck to do no more like i'm trying to look because when you had to pay to park you had to they had this little qr code shit so you scan that shit so i'm thinking Number one, I'm thinking I dropped the pen. So when once I seen that the pen didn't save for whatever reason, it's like, all right, cool. I still got the location where I got picked up at from the Uber. That's going to get me in the general area. I got there and still didn't recognize shit that was around me. So I was like, all right, I got to be close, though. So fuck it. We just go figure it the fuck out. So I kept looking around for any fucking sign that said paid parking here to look familiar from earlier. Still couldn't find nothing to look fucking familiar. So then... I finally remembered that I paid the shit online. So I go to look at the shit online uh, from where I paid for the parking at. This shit don't have a goddamn address on that bitch either. So now I'm really fucking frustrated as shit. I got, I'm tired. I'm tired as fuck, man. My fucking leg is hurting. My feet is hurting like a motherfucker. I'm thinking because I, I'm thinking that I didn't walk past the shit at least one time, once or twice. And I'm looking at the shit. I'm like, fam, this look like where the fuck I parked it. But I do not see the car no fucking where. And I done drove my mama shit out here. So now I'm thinking, nigga, it's 2 o'clock in the morning in goddamn Raleigh. And I done got my mama's car towed and shit. I ain't got no way to get home. I don't know who the fuck towed the shit or nothing, fam. So I'm just walking around like, where the fuck is the car at, my nigga? So finally, another, what, 30 minutes or so go by after all of that shit. And now I'm just walking around, just fucking clicking the button on the car at this point, my nigga. So I finally hear the shit and get closer to the shit. My nigga, tell me why I didn't walk past this bitch three times, my nigga, and didn't fucking see it. I don't know if it was a, a car that was parked beside me and was blocking it and I just couldn't see it or what the fuck was going on. But I finally, like I said, was just clicking the button and end up hearing the shit and fit come to find out the street that i parked on i walked past that bitch like three times though when i tell you i was so goddamn tight fam i was so goddamn tight but i was so tired i was ready to sit down i could not wait to sit the fuck down dog i tell you my knee nigga my knee is still fucking hurt dog I, nigga, Unk is getting old because my knee is still fucking killing me. If I let this shit get stiff, my nigga, I ain't no way ahead. That's gonna be my last festival, fam. And I met these other, uh, these other, they, they, they had to be some fucking kids, fam. They had to be some fucking kids. But I met these um, little motherfuckers that I was standing around talking with, and uh, we ended up getting cool, following each other on Instagram and shit. Shout out to y'all. I do not remember none of y'all's names, but. Uh, we got cool or whatever, just standing out there talking and just singing along to the music and shit together and whatnot. But um, they they were talking about how they basically festival hop. They like the festival hop crew, and it's just a bunch of them. It's like, my nigga, ain't no way in hell I'm finna be doing this shit again. If I ever go to one of these festivals again, my nigga, I am for damn sure gonna have to have a fucking media pass, some VIP shit or something, my nigga. That shit is for the fucking birds now, dog. I'm not, I'm cool on that shit, my nigga. That shit was 
dog. I I I used to work in a fucking factory that had to stand up for what 10, 12 hours a day. Never again, my nigga. I see why the fuck I left that shit because never a fucking again, dog. I'm not finna be standing out there in no fucking field for no goddamn what. I got there at three. Th- this is the second day. The second day I got there at three, and I think Cole finally got off the stage at twelve. So that's what six hours. No, more than that. I I got there earlier than that then because I got there like two. I got there like two. Yeah, two thirty three o'clock. So it was about six hours. But still, fam, ain't no that shit is that shit is fucking done with. And then plus the walking itself. All right, my nigga, I, I didn't, I didn't sign up. To, I didn't pay what three hundred dollars. However the fuck, however the fuck much that shit was, I didn't pay all that shit to be walking to go to the fucking gym, my nigga. I did not pay that shit to go to the fucking gym. But overall, it was it was great. I did have fun, and I I was talking shit. I would do that shit again. But some some shit will have to change. I need the the GA plus. The the JV or something, my nigga. I need something just for a second. I I need, Unk need to sit down for a second, dog. Because when I tell you, my fucking feet was killing me, my nigga. My shit was killing me, dog. Uh, but overall, like I said, it was fun. I had a, I had a good time. Met some cool people, and uh, you know, had a had an experience. That's that's really what you're paying for in a, in a situation like that. Had an experience. I I have been seeing though, um, that. At some point, there something happened. I don't know what the fuck happened, but at some point, something happened, and everybody is talking about this stampede of people that was running away from the stage. I don't know what the fuck happened because I, where I was standing at, we didn't see none of that shit. The only thing that we seen, uh, or only thing that we know about in my area, my general area anyway, was <coughs> before uh. Before J. Cole set, in between Summer Walk and J. Cole set, uh some something happened. It was like a medical emergency that was like towards the middle the middle area of the the crowd or whatnot. And they kinda paused everything to get that person or those people or just get, get that situation handled. But other than that, I don't know nothing about all these videos that's online talking about uh um some some other shit was going on like motherfuckers was running from the stage talking about run and everybody a bunch of motherfuckers that left and all this shit. i don't know what the fuck was going on with that shit i i didn't know shit shit about none of that i know uh behind me again in my general area while where we were standing there there was some dude who was trying to get to the front of the stage or just close to the stage or whatever talking about his uh i think he said his nephew or somebody was up front, and motherfuckers was like, "Fam, we've been standing here for like four hours. You not finna just get in front of everybody just because you say your fucking nephew was up there. If your nephew was up there, then my nigga, you just short because you not getting in front of all of us, and we've been standing out here for hours. Excuse me, waiting on these motherfuckers to go on stage. So, um, he ended up getting into it with some girl." I don't I'm not sure if she was black, white, or what the fuck. I don't know. But all I know is I heard motherfuckers go, ooh, and turn around and this nigga done been this nigga was on the ground, knocked the fuck out. This girl then apparently knocked this nigga it not not knocked him out. I think she just knocked him down. But either way, she done punched this nigga or shoved the fuck out of this nigga or something and had this nigga on his ass, fam. That shit was the the reaction I thought the nigga got <laughs> I thought the nigga got knocked out the way motherfuckers reacted, but I believe now that I think about it, I believe they said that she just shoved him down or pushed him down, whatever the fuck. But either way, this nigga got uh upended off his feet for uh talking shit to the girl or whatnot. But uh again, overall it was overall it was good. It was fun. It was great. It was uh it was definitely an experience. Like I said, it was definitely something that I would do again under different pretenses. But you know, we here. You know what I'm saying? You live and you learn. God damn, it's been fifty minutes. I've been talking about this shit. I did not plan on talking about this this shit for that long. 
Uh, damn, this might be a this might be a long ass episode. I might have to chop this shit up and put it out in uh in two in two parts or something because I got some other we got some other shit to talk about and to get to. Uh, let me see. So uh, that was uh this that's my my Dreamville recap. An hour a fucking hour in, my nigga. That is ridiculous. Ho- I hope that shit was. <laughs> I hope that shit was entertaining enough to uh to have been an hour long. But anyways, uh let's see. On to uh I guess we get into the regular pod shit now. Uh Black Excellence. So this week on Black Excellence, I'll shout out uh Angel Reese. Angel Reese is the center for the uh for LSU. Uh they just won the number well number one. First of all, they just won the uh women's national women's national uh co- national basketball college of I fucked that all the way up. They just won the women's college uh, tournament, so shout out to them for that. But also, uh, more individually, shout out to Angel Reese because she is the highest grossing um, college athlete, men and women, with her NIL deals. Uh, If I'm not mistaken, she has 17 NIL deals that is all together paying her I believe the number is three hundred and sixty some thousand. I want to say somewhere in that, and her, her um, her deals or her brand deals or whatever you want to call it, her her partnership deals range from a plethora of different places. It's uh Amazon, Wingstop, Raising Canes, uh Boost. Oh, I think that's how you say it. Is it Boost or Boast? I think it's Boost, the headphones, and I want. I think. I think if I'm not mistaken, I think McDonald's is one of them. So she got some shit under her belt. So I definitely want to say congratulations to her, number one, on winning the uh, the title, winning the championship, uh, winning the uh, tournament. And I actually think her cousin was on the men's team that won. I can't think of who the fuck it is. I want to say it was UConn. I might be wrong. Y'all know. I don't know too much of shit about sports but i did i want to say i did see that her cousin was on the winning team on the men's side too but uh shout out to her for that because uh they said that i think the highest gross the highest wnba player contract is eighty thousand, something like that yeah i want to say it was was in the range of like eighty thousand. so she's making what Damn near three times the uh, what the uh, somebody in the WNBA is making. So, and she's only a well, she's she's I think she's twenty years old. So she's a sophomore, junior, either sophomore or junior. So she got another. She got at least one more year of uh, of all this shit. And I want to say that after she after they won the championship, I don't know if she won MVP or whatnot. But I know they definitely won. The LSU definitely won the championship, and I want to say that they were saying that her um, her stock has now put her at easily at a million. Uh, let me see. Uh, LSU star LSU star Angel Reese has seventeen NIL deals totaling to three hundred ninety-two thousand per year. God damn. Uh, she now has the most NIL deals out of all college players, both male and female, is what I just said. I want to see, because I seen another report that was saying after the after they won the championship, what her what her shit is anticipated to be now. But I don't see it right off the bat. So we gonna move on, but. But not really, because somehow, some kind of way, motherfuckers, and again, I don't know shit about sports, so I don't know nothing about these motherfuckers uh, up until the last week or so. But somehow, the motherfuckers have turned the uh, the women's national, the women's best. <laughs> somehow, motherfuckers have turned the women's uh, championship, like the championship game. Into a fucking race war, man, because I don't know what the fuck is going on. They talking about this white girl, Kayla Clark, is the white female Steph Curry or some shit. 
and now uh, the 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 what's the vice president is trying to invite the winner and the runner up to the White House because they played such a great game, and it's like, fam, never in the history of ever has some shit like that happened, and it's just this this blatant for whatever reason push of a race debate now after this shit because Iowa is a predominantly white uh school and team and then LSU is predominantly black and there was the whole shit where Angel Reese was doing the the fucking uh uh you can't see me shit in old girl in the white girl's face but the white girl had done it to South Carolina the game before or two or three games before and it's a problem when the black girl do it, but it's not a problem when the white girl does it. And it's just like, fam, why? Why can't you just let them play fucking basketball, my nigga? Like, for the first time and who the fuck knows how long, motherfuckers is caring about women's basketball, women's sports in general right now. Y'all going to turn this shit into a fucking race war type shit. Like, bro, I'd be so over. I be so over motherfuckers, dog. Like I really don't fucking understand this shit. The, like the the these girls is getting fucking shot specifically with this game because I'm not even into the sports and shit like that. But this is all I've been seeing for like the last what two weeks or so now. But they done found some kind of way to to muddy this shit up and turn this shit into some old bullshit. And it's like, fam, why y'all why y'all gotta why y'all always gotta do some shit, bro? <laughs> like, just that's that be my only question with some of this shit. Why the fuck y'all always gotta do some shit? Just some unnecessary ass shit for no fucking reason, dog. Like, let the girls, let the girls play fucking ball and let them have fun. Like, my nigga, what the fuck is we doing here? Like, what the fuck is we really doing here, bro? It's it's got so bad to the point where, uh, I seen like I was just talking about Angel Reese and all her nil deals. Uh, I seen a uh, TikTok the other day. That was talking about the the little white girl, uh, Kaylin Kay, Clark, Kaylin, Kaylin or Caitlin Clark, whatever the fuck her name is. Uh, they was talk, they was basically comparing the ni the nil deals that both of them had. Well, they was, but they they was doing it without try without saying that they was doing it. So they were saying that uh, the video was basically saying that uh, Kaylin Clark doesn't have as many nil deals, but the the one that she does have, she like donates some of the some of the shit to like uh some type of foundation or something like that, and they was basically trying to they was alluding to the point that uh Caitlin Clark uh donates her money versus uh Angel Reese having all that money and keeping it to herself kind of thing that like that's 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 the that was like the sentiment of the video and shit and it's like my nigga again who you not doing the shit so why the fuck does it matter fam like i i don't understand motherfuckers trying to tell people what to do with they fucking money if she don't want if the girl don't want to donate none of her shit she ain't got to donate none of her shit she didn't earn that shit and then if the white girl do does want to donate her shit or take whatever deal that she has with whoever the fuck she got it with that's her fucking choice fam like i'm Dog, I be so tired of the extras that motherfuckers just be throwing on shit for no goddamn reason, bro. Like, it's fucking basketball. Again, ain't nobody really cared about this shit for the fucking longest, and now that motherfuckers finally care a little bit, they finally getting some shine and shit. Y'all want to do, throw the, throw the bullshit sauce on it. Fam, I, I be so over this shit. And also, <clears throat> with the, with the, uh, the women's championship, I believe this was during the the halftime or some shit. But there was a Bud Light commercial that featured a transgender social media influencer. I don't know their name. I'm not sure if it was um man or woman. I, I don't know. I really don't give a fuck. But they made that shit a whole thing, too. And it's just like that turned into a whole another thing. And you started seeing motherfuckers uh, shooting up fucking cans of Bud Light and throwing the shit away and all that. Y'all know how to, they do with the burning the jerseys and shit like that type of deal. And it's like, my nigga, 
Again, fam, who the fuck really cares, dog? Like, this shit, this shit really be blowing me when it comes to all this shit, this, just, just inclusion, equality shit. Like, just, it's not even, I don't care. If you want to chop your shit off, chop your shit off and go about your business, fam. Like, motherfuckers be making this shit a bigger topic then it fucking needs to be, my nigga. If they want to do what, just let people do what the fuck they want to do. If it ain't hurting you, my nigga, why the fuck do you care? That be my whole thing. I don't be understanding. If it's not affecting you, why the fuck do you really care? And I hate this sentiment of motherfuckers saying that, oh, it's, it's bad representation for the kids and all this shit. Fam, half the time when motherfuckers be saying that shit, it be about some shit the kids ain't got no business paying attention to anyway. It's just like the shit with uh, P Valley, and this is specifically in the black community. Motherfuckers talking about how P Valley is a gay show and all this shit, and it's a bad representation for kids. Fam, what kid is is watching fucking P Valley, my nigga? They on there fucking sucking and all this shit, cussing, selling drugs, rapping, strippers. That the show is literally about a fucking strip club, and you got kids. You letting your kids watch this shit? That says a lot more about you. Then it does what the fuck this show is about. If I'm gonna keep it a buck with you, and then this is uh with with this shit here, the Bud Light shit, my nigga, this is a fucking beer commercial. The kids not consuming no fucking beer, not supposed to be anyway. So again, that says more about you and your household than it does what the fuck is on the TV. Like, I'm I'm really I really just do not understand the shit. Now when it comes to certain shit where it's like. The cartoons and like the shit that I talked about a couple a, de- a couple episodes. This has been a while ago, and I was talking about um they had uh Robin from Batman and Robin. He came out as bisexual. When it's some shit like that, I can okay, I can understand y'all feeling like they targeting the kids or they trying to push the shit on the kids. I I I can understand. I can hear y'all's argument when it comes to that shit. But a whole lot of this other shit. Fam, y'all be reaching for the goddamn stars, my nigga. Y'all be reaching like surf. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Y'all be reaching like surf around this motherfucker when it comes to a lot of this shit. But uh, we going to move on from that shit. I, I, I just don't be understanding why the shit is such a big conversation sometimes. Like, I really don't. Like, if it's not directly, again, like with the, the cartoons and shit like that, I can understand it. But if it's not that, my nigga, it is not affecting the kids. Um, and then let me see, let me see what fuck is since we here now, speaking of that, uh, the kids, speaking of doing shit for the kids, there's been over the past couple of weeks is first of all, it's time for the, it's time for the political, the political games and the political narratives and all this other shit. So, uh, what maybe two or three weeks ago now, the CEO of TikTok had to go in front of or had to host a they out fam excuse me this is another thing sports politics and fucking religion i stay away from all this shit so i don't even know how the fuck this shit works really but there was a congressional hearing where they was basically uh the ceo of tiktok was defending tiktok's honor i guess i don't even fucking know dog like this shit had my goddamn head hurt because these old motherfuckers is up there asking this chinese excuse me i don't know if he's chinese but asking this asian man about all this different tech stuff that they don't know shit about them goddamn selves they just repeating some shit that their secretary or their interns are put together for them to ask and it's just fucking bullshit questions but uh, there was a congressional hearing. They had, like I said, the CEO of TikTok defending his company and what his company stood for and everything like that because they're trying to pass this act. It's uh, it's called, uh, what the fuck is that shit called? Um, I don't even fucking remember. I don't even fucking remember. But the base, it's basically an act that was, it's basically an act that's saying that all social media and anything on the internet needs to be monitored and have some type of control and whatnot. And TikTok wasn't playing ball. I think I want to say I talked about this already, but fuck it, we already here now. TikTok wasn't playing ball 
like the U.S. government wants them to, and now they're trying to get it banned. But really, to it in my opinion, it's in my opinion, it's it's a little bit deeper than that because the act, which I can't think of right now, and I, I fucking hate that I can't think of this shit, but. The act that they're trying to pass goes a lot deeper than TikTok because they presented the act. As a matter of fact, let me let me see if I can find it here real quick um, because that's gonna fucking bother me. Uh, let me see TikTok bad app or act. Uh, what is it called? It is. Um. What is this shit called? Come on, bro. Mm -mm -mm. Restrict Act. So they're trying to pass the Restrict Act, which is, again, basically giving consent to have everything that we use on a daily basis monitored at the end of the day. Because, But uh, what I was saying was they're trying to present the act as a way to ban TikTok because they're trying to push this whole agenda that TikTok is bad for the kids. So, again, they got this man on pretty basically uh, just short of being on trial, uh, trying to convict him of whatever crime they can fucking think of or sort of relate to as far as you're endangering the kids and you're a bad influence on the kids and we need to stop this company and your app because we have to protect our kids type shit. So, uh, again, they just got on this bunch of old motherfuckers asking him all these questions about this technology shit that they know absolutely nothing about to the point where my nigga, at one point, one of the questions that, one of the questions that they asked this nigga was, does TikTok connect to the Wi-Fi? And then he goes to explain to them in his, in his response or his answer to that question he tries to explain to them that TikTok is accessed through the app. If the phone that you are using is connected to your home Wi-Fi, then yes, I guess it technically does have access to the Wi-Fi. But the way that they were trying to phrase the question was kind of like TikTok is connected to your home Wi-Fi and it's stealing all your information and selling it to the highest bidder and all this shit. Mind you, this is exactly what fucking Facebook does. Because, fam, Facebook does... Mark Zuckerberg was just on the same... the same Had the same type of congressional hearing two or three times already now. And each time he does this shit, uh, Facebook conveniently has this data leak or data breach that they cover or not really cover, uh, shortly after his, uh, his congressional hearings. And they did, if I'm not mistaken, they tried to do the same thing with uh, Twitter at one point in time. But it's it it's just bull. They just trying to cover up the shit that they're doing with fucking bullshit because another, what I was getting to earlier, my conspiracy or the conspiracy that I'm kind of running with right now with this them trying to ban TikTok and shit, is that TikTok is an app that's it's more than it's more than I'm assuming what they intended for it to be more more than what uh they anticipated it being because it's it's sort of like a search engine at this point. So now TikTok is almost like the new YouTube. It's like the short uh short form short form form version of YouTube now. So you can get on TikTok and pretty much search how to do X, Y, and Z. And you can get a plethora of different videos of different people breaking down how to do whatever it is you just typed in of how to do. So it's basically, again, it's it's threatening to replace a lot of different, a lot of social media apps in one because it has a lot of other, a lot of things that other social media apps offer TikTok already offers and to the point where all of the social media basically adapted to 
how TikTok is ran and try to try to do and copy everything that TikTok does. That's when <clears throat> Facebook and Instagram introduced the reels and shit, and then uh, YouTube I- introduced their shorts, which is basically it's all the same shit, but they can't hold the same retention rate that TikTok does, so therefore they pretty much come together to try and get TikTok the fuck out of here by saying, by running with this agenda that it's bad for the kids, it's a bad influence on the kids, they're selling all our data and all this shit, but again, they do the exact same thing that they're trying to accuse TikTok of. So, uh, again, I talked about the data breach and whatnot that happens every time Mark Zuckerberg conveniently has a congressional hearing involving Facebook and Facebook not cooperating the way that the government would like. Uh, that it's that shit, but it's also again the TikTok is more of a is becoming more of a search engine also. So you could also get on TikTok and see a bunch of different things that are going on in the world that should be in the news. But it's not in the news because it doesn't fit the narrative of what they're trying to paint the news to be that day and whatnot. Uh, for instance, I know I came here a couple of episodes ago and talked about the the five. I, I want to say it was five or six uh, environmentalists that was on their way from Arkansas to Ohio. This was right after the uh, train derailment in Ohio. It was a bunch of um, a bunch of uh, scientists, uh, archa- archa- archaeological, that's not the right word. Uh, what word am I looking for? Yeah, archaeological. No, that's like dinosaurs and shit, I think. Fam, what? I'm having a fucking brave fart right now. Uh, agricultural, that's the word. It was a bunch of agricultural scientists that was on their way to uh, Ohio to do tests and whatnot on the soil and just environment in general around the spill in uh that took place in ohio after the train derailment so uh again i know i talk about this shit it came out on the news that the when the plane because the plane ended up crashing but it came out on the news that when the plane took off there was like heavy crosswinds and whatnot that day i think it was some shit that came out saying it was foggy and misty and all this other bullshit but then it was people who actually lived in that area who got on tiktok and other social medias but tiktok is blew up faster of course but uh they got on people who lived in the area got on tiktok and said that no my nigga it wasn't nothing like that it's been a, a clear sunny fucking day out here like there's some other shit going on and throughout the the growth and popularity of tiktok over the last what three years really because tiktok really popped off during the pandemic that's when everybody was doing all the dances and shit that's when shit was kind of cute but now again it's other shit being exposed on there to the point where you just see a whole bunch of other shit that's going on in the world like uh it was this it was this uh it was a couple videos actually of people on tiktok saying that if you go on instagram and search France. Only thing you're gonna see is pictures of like the Eiffel Tower and just these romantic uh just this romantic beautiful scenery of everything that France has to offer and whatnot. But on the flip side of that, you go on TikTok and you see the basically the situation that was go- the situation that's still, I believe, going on in France is uh the sanitation workers are are or were on strike so there was basically garbage and trash bags and shit and all over the place in france because the sanitation workers were trying to get more money if i'm not mistaken but they basically wasn't coming to work they was on strike and all this shit to the point where people was going in the streets and setting setting the trash on fire because there was so much trash all over the place So now, again, you go on Instagram or Facebook or Google or anything like that, and all you see is these beautiful romantic pictures of these great destination spots that you can go to in France. But then you go on 
uh, go on TikTok specifically, and you can see the people who actually live there who are posting the current situation and everything that's going on. And it just shows a diff- a completely different view of the world at this point because, again, it's shit that should be in the news that's not on the news because it doesn't fit the narrative that they're trying to paint right now. Um, also you can go on again, just any, pretty anything that you want. I get a lot of my topics from TikTok and it'd be shit that I had no fucking clue that was going on in the world because nobody talks about this shit, but you get, you got people who get on this platform and can get, you can have five followers on TikTok and you you can post some shit that gets 5 million views. So it's, it's situations like that and accounts like that and people like that who are posting their own real life shit that's again newsworthy but the news is not covering for conveniently whatever reason and so i feel as though this this uh what is it restrict act is more so uh is more so trying to get a handle on the information that we receive because they don't want us to know a lot of the things that is out there and the truth to the truth behind a lot of the shit that's out there. <clears throat> um, because even earlier today, I seen this video where this guy was talking about there's is a, give me one second. I can pull this shit up right now. There is a, uh, a thing called, um, where's the shit at? Where's the shit at? Um, unclaimed, unclaimed funds so wherever whatever state you live in the treasury in that state holds on to any unclaimed payments or bank old bank accounts settlements or anything of that nature that goes unclaimed or untouched for whatever reason if you you get a check mailed to you and you move and is for whatever reason you didn't update your uh your new your new uh moving address and you don't see that check and they try to send that check a couple times excuse me a couple times or whatever and you end up not cashing that check eventually that check is going to go to the treasury in whatever state that you live in so there was this guy and I'm actually going to play the video cuz he explains this shit a whole lot better than I do but uh, there's a way to actually reclaim, reclaim that uh that money that that you never claimed that people are trying to send you or whatever. And if I can find the video, I'm gonna play the video because, like I said, he explains this shit a whole lot better than I can. Uh, give me. You're probably real mad about your taxes right now, right? You didn't get enough money back, or you owed money. Well, I'm gonna teach you right now how to get money back from your state because all 50 states have a thing called unclaimed property, which is what their treasury departments keep. You see, in every single state in the entire country, all 50 of them, they have a department in the treasury called unclaimed property, where anytime there's an account that hasn't been touched in a while or a payroll check or anything that's supposed to be paid out to people that isn't claimed, the state takes and puts into a fund. But they give you a chance to get it out of there. They give you a chance. I, this is how you find it. You're gonna type in, in Google, or Bing, or DuckDuckGo, I don't care what you use. Type in unclaimed property, and then the name of your state. You're gonna look at the top results. You want one that ends in .gov, all right? .gov. Anything else could be a scam. You wanna go to your treasury website for your state. In my case, it's the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Not a state, it's a Commonwealth, we're classy. And mine is unclaimedproperty.patreasury.gov.gov, okay? You click on that, and you're going to go and start following the search results. Now, it's very important that you see that .gov, like I said, because some states, like Florida, they have theirs housed at fltreasurehunt.gov because Florida's got to be weird about everything. Anyway, you're going to go to the unclaimed property website, there will be a button where you can click search. You can then search your name, previous addresses you lived at, et cetera. Try to keep your search kind of broad, right? Like my name is Alexander Perlman's the full name. If I just type in Alex Perlman, it's not gonna show up. So I click the button that says, you know, or things that are close. 
I did it for my wife. My wife had a paycheck from Ruby Tuesdays from 2002. That restaurant, that branch of Ruby Tuesdays has not existed in 20 years. That money was still waiting for. So she's finally getting paid for a job she did two decades ago. So you probably have money in there. If you had a Google AdSense account and that never paid you out because you never made $100 to their minimum to even cut you a check, like I did, that money ends up going to the unclaimed property area of your state treasury. So go check this out, okay? Type in your state, unclaimed property. Look for the .gov treasury site and then go and check it out. You are missing out on money. And the reason I'm telling all of you this is because I just hit a million followers last night and I'm feeling good and I want good things. All right, so yeah, basically, that, that that's basically the gist of that. And he goes on to uh, making another video of people who did the shit, they searched their names up and actually seen that they were owed some money. And I now know why Mr. Beast does this, okay? It feels so good to help people, and I have no idea how many people I was about to help yesterday when I posted a video 24 hours ago about the unclaimed property department in all 50 U.S. states. In every state of the union, there's a treasury department that just has money that people have never claimed and that is waiting for people to claim. I made a video about it 24 hours ago. It was viewed 1.7 million times and 5,000 people commented. And I have a list here of how much money people got back. My beautiful wife, Mrs. Pearlmania, sat down and did totals on this. She found out what the lowest number was, the highest number, and the grand total of everything. And we just changed a ton of people's lives. And I can't handle this responsibility, but I want more people to check into this, okay? So I'm gonna tell you if you didn't see the video, go online, go to Google, go to Yahoo if you're old, okay? And type in unclaimed property and then a state that you've lived in or live in right now, right? I live in Pennsylvania. I typed in unclaimed property, Pennsylvania. I then went to the .gov website, .gov, and then it sent me to a search engine there where I could search funds that were in my name that I've never claimed one of which was from a previous employer. Other people are finding things like a bank account that their grandma made for them that they never knew about that the state took from the bank, okay? So let me tell you some crazy fucking totals that we found out from yesterday. A lot of people were hoping they'd find stuff and some people didn't. However, they searched for their friends and family and then reached out to those people because they had money waiting for them. The lowest amount that we saw in our comments, our 5,125 comments, was a single penny. However, the highest amount, the highest amount, someone yesterday watched my video and then discovered that they were owed $22,325.17. Someone watched my video and then went online and their life changed, okay? And a lot of you went online and searched this. So much so. So yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna play the whole the whole video of that one, but basically shit like that. And it's it's been TikTok has a a good uh a good amount of videos that do shit like that. So I actually did this shit because I thought this shit was a fucking joke. I actually did this shit and when you go to the website uh, I live in North Carolina, of course. Well, I, I live in North Carolina, so I typed in what exactly what he said, unclaimed funds, North Carolina. It takes you to a page, and it's basically a public record of all any and all unclaimed checks, settlements, whatever the fuck that they that the uh the North Carolina Treasury has. And I searched for my name. I didn't see my name on there. But I end up did I end up seeing my little brother's name on there. So I sent it to him and told him what page to go look on. So I don't know if he actually went and done the shit and figured out how much he's owed. But I definitely seen, like I said, my little brother's name on there. I was looking for my name. I was looking for my daddy's name, my mama's name. But I end up, like I said, finding my little brother's name. So the shit is real. And again, it's a .gov website. So the shit is, it's all public record. But without just the knowledge of shit you just don't know you just don't know that that type of shit is out there so without saying that 
fuck that without seeing his video, that person who ended up finding out that they was owed twenty some thousand dollars would have never fucking got this shit. Or never even knew that they had the option, excuse me, to even claim that shit. So again, that's that's my opinion of what the what the this banning of TikTok shit is all about. Is that number one, they trying to use the political side of this shit of we gotta protect the kids and Cause, Cause at one point in the in the the deposition, uh, I, I don't even know if the shit is called a deposition or whatever the fuck the shit is called. At one point in the shit, one of the congressmen said to the CEO of TikTok and said, "Uh, you've done something that nobody nobody or anything has done in the past however many years, which was to get the Democrats and Republicans to one hundred percent agree on something." And basically saying that all of us agree that your your uh, app and your uh, company in general should be banned from our um, our internet or whatever the fuck. So again, they trying to use this political play of save the kids and all this shit. When really, when you look at the underline the undertone of all this shit, it's really to control the narrative of the media to control the information that you get because another thing you can go on tiktok it's a lot of it's a lot of pages on tiktok that's dedicated to how to file your taxes properly how to start a business properly the different insurances and uh licenses and things you need for different businesses or different uh entrepreneurs like it's so much information that you can find on the shit to where it's and especially with the crypto and all this shit because there's a lot of it's a lot of pages on it is dedicated to like how to uh you know how to best i guess judge or estimate the the different uh cryptocurrencies and stocks and all this shit that you should be investing in and it's just again it's just a a, a different wealth of information that we not taught none of this shit in school if you go to fucking public school anyway, we're not taught none of this shit in school. The the shit is not the this sh- it is easy to access if you know what to look for to even access the shit. But a lot of the disadvantages that we have, not even as black people, just as the average person out here, a lot of the information that you missing is to even know what the fuck to look for in the first place, bro. Like, who the fuck would have even thought to let me get on Google or let me go to my uh, state treasury and see if I'm owed any money or anything, my nigga. Nobody that I know or I've ever heard of, nobody just thinks about shit like that. But then you get on this fucking app that came out of nowhere three years ago and you find out that, oh, shit, I'm owed x amount of dollars from the fucking state and it's like my nigga shit is like (laughs) this tiktok shit is almost like a crack in the matrix or something my nigga like it's just showing it just shows a completely different side of the world and of life in general because there's so much you can get on there and learn and if you just do a little bit of research you might find you might come across a video and think it's some bullshit because when I first seen that video I thought it was some bullshit, but then I did again like the like the motherfucker said got on the treasury site and I be damn it's like two not even two throughout the whole alphabet it's probably ten thousand pages of everybody in the state every person and business in the state of North Carolina that's owed any type of money. Or has any type of money on hold uh, at the uh, treasury in North? I I just did North Carolina because that's the only place I've ever lived. But just in North Carolina alone, it's like ten thousand pages of motherfuckers that's owed some type of money or have some type of money on hold at the treasury. And again, it's just like, fam, who the fuck would even thought of some shit like that, bro? Now somebody is up twenty bands out of nowhere. Because of a fucking video on TikTok. That's why they want to get this shit banned. That's that's one thousand percent what I believe with this shit. That I believe that's wholeheartedly why they want to get this shit banned. Because they can't control the information that we're receiving off of it. It's not regulated by whatever uh by whatever regulations and rules that these other social media sites are held to for whatever reason. Because it's just 
again, it's you can organically just get a super push out of nowhere just because people fuck with whatever you uploaded that day. Like the shit is fucking nuts, my nigga. Um, not to mention it was something else that I was finna just say, uh, regarding this shit. Um, fuck that shit just slipped my mind that quick. God damn it! Oh, a lot of the shit that's going on with the the environmental on the environmental tip, which uh, is something else that I think is going to become a fucking political stance that motherfuckers is going to stand on. So, of course, we had the train derailment that was maybe a month or so ago at this point. But now, uh, just two two or three days ago, there was a huge chemical fire in Richmond, Virginia. And it was, it was started at this uh, battery and... This battery and um, give me one second. Uh, how the fuck do you spell Richmond, nigga? This battery and plastic plant, and it's just this huge factory fire. What the fuck is this shit? At? Was it Richmond, Virginia? I want to say it was Richmond, Virginia. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, yeah, there was a plant in Richmond, VA. The building that caught fire is a plant. Richmond and chemical fire update. The building that caught fire is a plastic and battery recycling center. Everyone in a 0.5 mile radius is being told to evacuate. Richmond and chemical fire. Okay, it was Richmond, Indiana. My fault. It wasn't Richmond, Virginia, but it's Richmond, Indiana. Uh, like like the the per like the little AI and we not even finna get into that shit but like the little AI voice just said it was a fire it was a fire at a chemical and battery plant and again some most shit that I ain't seen nowhere else other than on fucking TikTok and it's because again people who live in the area just posting shit that's happening in the world around them and now it's informing all of us on this shit and it's like fam what the fuck is going on out here? And there was also something that was going on up in the Philadelphia area over the weekend to where they said that their drinking water won't be no good after I think it was like 10 o'clock on Sunday night or something like that. And so everybody that was in the Philadelphia area or that part of uh, Pennsylvania area, they were trying to stock up on water and shit like that. And that was due or that was a result of, I believe, from what I've seen, that was a result of the shit that happened in Ohio and whatever chemicals that spilled in Ohio, it made its way into the Delaware River, I believe, or the Delaware water system or whatnot, and it, it trickled over into that area of Pennsylvania. And it's like, fam, again, what the fuck else are they talking about this shit, bro? But that's a whole nother thing. Like I said, that's going to be a whole nother topic in the political aspect that's coming up because of course next year is election year so this year they amping the shit up but it's gonna definitely be motherfuckers is running on the their best uh environmental um environmental strategy and their best way to protect our kids from the shit that's on social media it's like my nigga when it comes to my tiktok fam I don't get on TikTok, and I don't be seeing no little kids, bro. Like, because that, that was the whole congressional hearing was basically about they have kids on there, and the shit is inappropriate, the dances that the kids be doing, and the quote-unquote challenges and shit that the kids be doing, because there was some challenge. uh, There was some challenge that they was harping on that they was trying to say that started on TikTok. And come to find out, this shit started on Facebook by some motherfuckers that was – trying to say that the shit started on TikTok just to help whatever case and stance that these motherfuckers were trying to stand on. But come to find out that some shit like that has never even been on TikTok, bro. But uh, back to what I was saying, when I get on TikTok, I don't be seeing no little kids doing nothing. So these old motherfuckers is getting on their TikTok uh, for you pages and seeing these kids doing these inappropriate dances, my nigga. That's because you don't like a bunch of videos of kids doing inappropriate dances, my nigga. I don't know what to tell you. Because the shit that I be seeing on my TikTok for you page be 
I get the occasion. <laughs> I get the occasional stripper talking about her stripper experience that night at the club. Then I get the 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 uh the tip the fucking uh comedians doing stand up jokes and shit. Then I get the 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 artists, the music artists, hip hop artists and whatnot previewing their songs and just motherfuckers telling funny stories or a quick dad joke or some bullshit like that. That's the type of shit that I be saying on my For You page because that's the type of shit that I like and interact with on the app. But if you seeing a bunch of kids on there shaking ass, gyrating or doing whatever the fuck y'all saying that y'all seeing motherfuckers, these kids do on TikTok, that's because that's the shit that you like and commented on and saved to your personal page, my nigga. I don't know what else to tell you. Again, that says a lot more about you than it does about what the fuck is going on in the world right now. So, uh, but yeah, this this TikTok shit is getting out of hand, bro. And if you watch any of that congressional hearing shit, from the the questions that they was asking that motherfucker, they they, they was very targeted questions to the point where they they was they was statements that was just put in the form of questions. So again, it was the the does it connect to Wi Fi shit. Then it was the the shit with the filters because they was trying to say that the filters was taking pictures of your face and storing it for uh AI recreation programs or some nut ass shit, bro. And it's like my nigga, you don't even know how to fucking plug your phone up to charge it up at night. How the fuck you gonna tell this motherfucker about how a fucking filter works, bro? That shit was blowing me, dog. And then they was asking him questions and not letting him answer at all. So they were asking these long ass, long ass, confusing ass questions and then say, oh, we're out of time now before the motherfucker could respond. So then they would, the the media was chopping up the shit that they was at, they was chopping up the questions that they was asking him and then they were showing him with this dumb look on his face like he didn't have an answer to nothing. But no, if you actually watch the shit, he answered all them fucking questions. It's just they would end, they would, they would just conveniently run out of time after they asked him this wild ass, nut ass question and he just didn't have time according to them didn't have time to answer the question so now he's sitting there with a dumb look on his face because he trying to answer a question that took them five minutes to ask in two seconds and it's like my nigga what the fuck you expect this man to do dog like it's very it's very it's very uh what's the word i'm looking for manipulative the way that they they put out certain information with certain things. And it's to the point now where you can just tell. Again, like I say all the time, they do the shit in our fucking face and act like we just supposed to ignore the shit and not be not be concerned with it or not give a fuck about it or I don't know, my nigga. Like again, they just do the shit in our fucking face all the time. This is just excuse me, another perfect example of this shit. Uh speaking of doing shit in our face and we just not supposed to give a fuck about it god damn i'm almost at two hours fuck it uh like i said speaking of doing shit in our fucking face there's just been announced in the last two days that uh it just hulu just announced that they are going to do a documentary or docuseries on freak nick now It's to the point where I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of sick of this whole cycle, and again, just the most shit that they doing in our fucking face that we just supposed to ignore and take with a grain of salt and just keep it pushing. This trend of these people, and when I say these people, I don't mean white people. I just, I mean these big companies and corporations. That just com- so co- just so conveniently having to be ran by white people, but these big companies and corporations getting our culture and our sauce, all our shit, calling us all types of any name under the sun, other than a child of God, my nigga. They call us coons, ratchet, wild animals fucking heathens 
everything short of the of the word nigga, and not really because a lot of the motherfuckers come out and straight up say that shit, call us nigga so I fucking face, and then will turn around and find some kind of way to sell our shit right back to us. So with this freak Nick shit that Hulu is doing, this comes shortly after, and I know I got on here talking about this the other week or the other episode, where ABC is doing this, and I don't know if it's specifically about this, or if it's a a running show and just the new season is about this, but ABC has a documentary or a documentary season or short or whatever about the YSL situation that's currently still going on an active investigation or trial in Atlanta right now with uh, Young Thug and Gunner and all of them. So they got that going on with abc and now hulu is coming out to do this uh freak nick freak nick uh i think it's 94 documentary and it's like fam again y'all go all out y'all's way to call us all types of everything under the fucking sun and then turn around and profit off of our shit and sell it back to us and if i'm really being honest about it we can't even be too mad at them because we allow the shit to happen we we suck <laughs> We suck this shit up every time. We soak this shit up soak. I said suck. That's that's a wild. Pause, my nigga. We soak this shit up every time, my nigga. They do the shit again in our face all the time. And we just fucking take it, bro. That's that's very similar to everything that's going on with the, the reality shit. The reality show shit. And I've, I'm i very adamant about not being a fan of none of that shit, bro. Like, all the, the fucking basketball wives, the uh, love and hip-hop this, and the marriage counts and all this shit. I hate all of that shit because it just shows us in a light that motherfuckers, they already judge us in anyway. And now you get these shows where these motherfuckers is getting on – uh national tv and throwing drinks in each other's face cussing each other out and all this extra shit in front of these motherfuckers and it's like fam i i don't i hate to sound like fucking chris rock in his latest special he was talking about uh my mama told my mama raised me not to fight in front of white people like i i I really hate that whole thing that he did because that that shit was fucking bad, my nigga. Because at the end of the day, who the fuck really cares what they think? But at the same time, we have to care what they think because just the world that we live in, they hold the power that we don't. So we kind of do have to care a little bit. But anyway, that's 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 a whole that's a whole thing in itself. But just I just I hate the way that these celebrities and these influencers and whatnot get on these stages and these platforms and do all this extra shit and build these platforms up to the point where the the next wave of celebrities and influencers and everybody feel like, oh, since they did it, we have to do it too because that's our way in the door, basically. And again, at the end of the day, it's just them selling, it's just them judging us and calling us out our names and perceiving us in a way and then selling it right back to us because all this shit is is white owned all this shit is owned by and let me not even say white owned because it's deeper than white at this point it's 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 them it's the whoever you want to say the illuminati and all them type of motherfuckers is those are the people that i'm i'm talking about it's not really even a a strictly black and white thing it's a power versus powerless conversation right now so it's like with this this hulu shit and hulu is owned by disney who also owns abc who also owns it's it's like it's really only what five i think it's like five major uh media outlets is disney fox viacom 
Disney Fox Viacom. And it's one or two more. I can't I can't think right now, but of course Viacom is the one who owns uh BET, VH1, MTV, and I think uh CMTV too, if I'm not mistaken. So it's like they already got their hands in the fucking reality show shit with all the, the Mona Scott productions and the BETs and uh Love and Hip Hop, uh the College Hill shit back in the day, Flavor Love, all that shit. They they own all that shit, bro. And again, they just turn around and put put the shit on TV and streaming services and pump it right back in our face. And again, we soak that shit up. Every fuck you niggas soak that shit up all the fucking time, bro. So on a business tip, you can't even be mad at these motherfuckers because there is some shit that they know is gonna sell. But I don't, I don't know, man. I just, <laughs> I hate to be in my woke bag and shit right now because this is not, this really ain't the shit that I be on. But it's like, fam, at some point, at some point, I just want you niggas to to open your eyes to some of the shit that's going on around you, bro. Like, this shit don't be happening just because it be happening, bro. Like, it's a reason all this shit happened, my nigga, because. It makes dollars, and if it makes dollars, it makes sense. And you niggas going to get on and stream and watch all this bullshit. So it's going to be, continue to be sold in that way. And they're going to keep owning the shit, so they're going to keep getting paid for the shit. One thing I say, even though I don't fuck with it still, one thing I can say good about the Zeus Network is, to my knowledge, and I could be wrong, but to my knowledge anyway, it is black owned or majority black owned because if I'm not mistaken, Ray J was a part had a part in funding the shit for the shit to even come to fruition for come to fruition if I can get my fucking words out. But Ray J was a part of that from the from the ground. And uh if I'm not mistaken, Floyd Mayweather now either owns it or owns a big enough majority in it to where this nigga <laughs> this nigga held a fucking boxing event that was uh, exclusively on the Zeus network that uh he was the main event exhibition fight for so that that's one thing that I can say about Zeus is it seems to be anyway black owned or majority black owned so at least we getting paid for the nigga shit over there but with the rest of this shit bruh it's them they own this shit and we just soak the shit up and let them keep doing this shit and it's like fam i just i just want you niggas to i just want better <laughs> my nigga that, that's really all it is because all this freak this hulu freakness shit is gonna do is give motherfuckers some shit to talk about for like a week and a half or so and the shit just is going to run up. It's going to do a bunch of numbers. Then they're going to find the next shit, the next big nigga shit to put on display and sell it to us again. It's just an endless fucking cycle at this point, bro. Like, it, it's fucking, it's exhausting talking about this. It's exhausting talking about and thinking about this shit, bro. So, moving on from that. Um, uh, Speaking of shit that motherfuckers just talk, talk about for a week and a half. This fucking Joe Budden, Rory, and Maul shit then then cycled again. It started with uh uh late last week, I wanna say, uh Complex put out their I think it was top fifty or top twenty five. I don't I don't even fucking know, but they put out their uh most most important or most influential personalities in media. And uh, Joe Budden was number one. <clears throat> so, uh, of course, with Joe Budden being number one and Joe himself, Roy and all having a show, of course, motherfuckers had to talk about it because how can you be a hip-hop media platform and not acknowledge a, pla a, a list of the top hip-hop media platforms that came out? So... Uh, of course, with Joe being number one, he got on to talk to his shit or whatnot. But uh, Rory and Maul, they, of course, covered the list, had to cover the list. And I want to say Rory and Maul was 
what they on the list? I can't even remember. To be honest with you, but nobody really cares about the list except for the number one. Really, the number one and number two spot. Number one was Joe Bud. Number two was academics, and in my opinion, it's very well deserved because I don't really see nobody out here consistently working the way that Joe does. Because Joe, <coughs> excuse me, Joe and his crew. They do they do a lot. They do a lot of shit. Joe specifically himself, he does a lot of shit because they do two free episodes on uh they do two free episodes during the week and then they also do two Patreon episodes throughout the week. And then Joe himself, he also does an amp show twice a week where once he's he's uh hosting and he's just playing music and the other day he has a guest on in which he host a guest and plays music in between the conversation or whatever so i would say that that there's that's a very easy acknowledgement to say that joe is joe is clearly number one out here i'm gonna be honest with you and that's not even me being a excuse me me being a fan of him like i am that's just i mean if you just look and see what the fuck his competition is out here doing compared to what he's doing he's out working a lot of these motherfuckers there's there's no doubt about that at fucking all, I don't feel like anyway. But again, uh, of course, all the blogs and other personalities that, that was on the list or didn't make the list or whatever the fuck, they had to talk about the list. So, Roy and Maul, they also do two episodes a week, and they also have a Patreon episode that they do, and um, so they got on their Patreon and time out let me explain that patreon if you don't know <laughs> um let me see how can i how can i explain patreon patreon is patreon is a platform to where creators can upload content and people get on there and subscribe to them and pay a monthly fee of whatever the creator decides to set their monthly fee at for a certain amount of content so uh specifically with joe shit it's like uh it's different tiers so it's like a ten dollar tier five tw- ten dollar tier twenty five dollar tier fifty dollar tier and i think it might be one more but you get whatever they whatever the creator decides excuse me to allow someone to get at a certain tier is what they get and of course before you sign up for it uh what you're gonna get in that tier is gonna be listed on your purchase uh statement or whatever so uh to make a make a long story short patreon is to podcasters what only fans is to strippers and instagram girls that's 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 as simple as i can put it my nigga so uh again, like I was saying, Roy and Maul, they do two free episodes throughout the week. And to my knowledge, I think they only do one Patreon episode. I really don't know because I barely listen to their shit now. If I'm being a thousand percent with you. But um and this is something I can say about Roy and Maul. These niggas is these niggas is smart because whenever it comes time to talk about some shit with Joe, them niggas gonna put that shit on sale. Them niggas is gonna put a dollar amount behind that shit. So of course they, like I said, they had to talk about the the list and whatnot. And Joe being on the list with them already having a a beef with uh Joe with the splitting of their their old show and whatnot. Of course they put the the conversation about them talking about the list and Joe behind a paywall. So like I said, them niggas that was that was that's about the smartest shit that they do and anytime they talk about this nigga they make sure to put this shit behind the paywall so uh but just like anything that you put on the internet eventually motherfuckers is gonna screenshot it screen record it, and put the shit out for free so shortly after they uh they talked about on their regular episode on their free episode they talked about them uh talking about they talked about them talking about the list uh it came out to the public for free somebody screen recorded it and it hit the timeline and obviously it got back to joe about the shit that they said and they basically said the same thing that they've been saying for the past what two years since the show broke up 
which was Maul called him a thief. Rory tried to halfway compliment him and not really talk about it while also talking about it. But either way, it got back to Joe. And then Joe got on his shit where he was popping his shit for being number one and niggas hating on him and all this shit. And the same shit that he's been saying also for the past year and a half, how long ago it's been since they broke up. And then that shit got back to Rory and Maul, and now they going back and forth. Joe called them the – and I don't even think Joe was talking about them when he said this, the bare minimum shit. I don't think he was referring to them, but like uh, Cinderella – like the prince told Cinderella – if the shoe fit, you must have quit. Or whatever the fuck Johnny Cochran told OJ or said in defense of OJ. But uh, Joe made a statement about the, the bare minimum boys. Them, them niggas took that shit to be him talking about them, and they ran with it. They named their next episode the bare minimum boys and made a fucking T-shirt where they spelled the shit rogue. <laughs> they spelled... A uh, minimum wrong on the back of the T-shirt that they made for the shit, and again, it's just bullshit. Them motherfuckers going back and forth, fam. It's like, fam, I'm so tired of that shit, dog. Like, as a fan of Joe, and sometimes I'm still a fan of Rory and Maul too. Like, I they they post some shit. I listen to their shit every now and then. I still fuck with them. Like, I be trying to fuck with them, but it, their show just ain't ain't all the way the same like it was no more like it, they don't have they don't have the same excitement and chemistry that they had before <clears throat> so i done kind of fell off as far as listening to they shit every episode like i was in the beginning but it's just again just the back bitter back and forth like these motherfuckers just arguing like a old married couple or some shit at this point. Like, you can clearly see that these motherfuckers think about each other all the time. And the shit that really be blowing me with the shit, they get on their platforms, and every time one of them talk about the the other, it's, they start off with, I don't care nothing about what the fuck such and such said, but then they proceed to go on to make the next 40 minutes of their podcast episode specifically about everything in detail that the other motherfucker just said about them. So it's like, fam, will you niggas just admit that y'all be watching each other's shit and then get on your shit and respond to what the fuck they just said about you? Like, if you would just do that, we could we could, we could, could probably move on from the shit. But you niggas running around with your egos and trying to be, I don't give a fuck so much, but let me respond every time these niggas talk about me or i think they talking about me it's like man just shut the fuck up i wish these niggas would have a fucking circle jerk hug it <coughs> excuse me i wish these niggas have a fucking circle jerk hug this shit out going to around the corner fight real quick or something and get this shit the fuck over with dog like i'm so tired of this shit my nigga and now they go through this shit every couple of months where they get content off of each other and then claim that they don't care and they don't listen or pay attention to what either one of them is doing. It's like, my nigga, just, just say y'all miss each other and move the fuck on, dog. Like, I'm so, as a fan of these motherfuckers, I'm so tired of this shit, dog. Like, you can't, it's been like the last four, the, not even, not four, it ain't been that long, but the last like three going on four, because I know, I know Rory and Ma are going to respond to the shit that Joe said earlier today. So it's going to be coming up on four episodes now that these motherfuckers is going back and forth. But they so-called don't give a fuck about each other. It's like, fam, get the fuck over it, dog. Like, sue, sue these niggas. Rory and Ma need to sue this, sue this nigga Joe for whatever money that he owes them or that they claiming he owed them. And then Joe need to sue them for defamation of character or some shit to get these motherfuckers to shut the fuck up. Everybody just need to shut the fuck up and go on about their motherfucking business, dog. Like, this shit is so old. I'm so exhausted with even hearing about the shit. But I can say that <laughs> now that uh Flip is on Joe Budden, the Joe Budden Network now, on the Joe Budden podcast now. Flip has really made this shit very entertaining the last two or three episodes because when this nigga get fired up and then he fuck around and have Joe fired up, that shit be fucking hilarious. I ain't gonna hold you. Like, I'm so tired of this shit, but at least I'm at least thankful 
that Joe, I mean not Joe, uh, Flip is there to uh, egg Joe on and, and, and just carry this shit and hype this motherfucker up, put a battery in this nigga's back because that shit has been so entertaining. When that nigga get to going and then Joe get to going too, playing the gunshots and shit, and oh, that shit is just fucking funny. But I'm, I'm, I'm really tired of this shit. These motherfuckers need to grow the fuck up. Stop talking about each other or figure this shit out and come back together and do something or something, man, because this shit is... This shit is really out of hand at this point. This shit is really out of hand. Speaking of out of hand, my nigga, I am at two hours. I am really at two hours. I'm going to have to listen back to this shit to see if this shit is even worth putting out. I might not put this shit out. Because I talked about fucking Dream World for like an hour itself. And then another hour of this bullshit. My nigga, I don't, I don't know if this episode going to be worth it or not. But I did say at the beginning, I had some opinions about some shit. And I had some. Hopefully that shit was entertaining enough. But I, Because I had some opinions. And I got a few more. <laughs> I got a few more. But I, I don't think I'm going to hold y'all hostage that fucking long. Because two hours is fucking ridiculous, my nigga. Uh, and really, so let me see. Really the only thing left. Uh, oh, I skipped over one. God damn it. I skipped over the Trump shit. Uh, when I was talking about the the political, going back to the uh, political stances and shit, motherfuckers just posturing for the election and shit next year. That's that's all this Trump shit is too. That Trump shit falls directly behind the uh, the TikTok shit because Trump was also trying to get the TikTok shit banned uh, when he was running or while he was in still in office. So that's that's basically just an offshoot of that. Again, that's going to be something else that motherfuckers is going to figure out how to run their next they campaign off next year as far as, you know, we got him uh, arrested. And the, the crazy shit with Trump, excuse me, or oh, the crazy shit, the crazy shit with uh, the Trump shit, they said that this nigga was under arrest, but then said that he won't be put in handcuffs and he won't have a mug shot. Fuck me up because... I don't I don't see how that's fucking possible. But I mean, I guess he was once a sitting president, so shit go different for them and he's obviously not going to be in the regular prison or jail or whatever the fuck that uh me and you would be in. But it's like still, fam, it's something my nigga, but also if they had put this nigga Trump in handcuffs that shit would have been all over the fucking news. That shit would have he would have used that shit would have replaced the MAGA hat, my nigga. They would have they would have dubbed that nigga a fucking martyr. He'd have been goddamn the new uh Harriet Tubman or something free. That, that, <laughs> if that damn a uh, mugshot of Trump on a t-shirt or a hat would have been damn near the new uh Moses, let my people go, nigga. That that would have been his new fucking slogan whenever he got out and was able to run again or whatever that shit would have been that would have been some wild times my nigga um but yeah i just didn't i i I, and to keep it a buck with you i don't even know what the fuck the nigga was arrested for i know it was something to do with the stormy daniel shit and uh i think tax evasion or something like that again i have no fucking clue but like I said, that's just some more uh, political posturing shit that they got going on for the up and coming election. And fam, I don't even know. I I don't. I honestly don't know nothing about what's going on with none of the the politicians and shit right now. I don't know who is running against Joe Biden right now. I don't know if Joe Biden is gonna run again. I don't know if they're gonna push for Kamala to to be the the. Uh, I can't even think of the, the fucking term right now. Be the, the primary. I don't know who's running on the Republican side other than Trump. Trump is the only Republican that I know about right now. I don't know who his running mate is. I don't know who he's running against. I don't know none of that shit, bro. They, shit like that is shit that you don't see up until, what, it'll probably be coming probably October. October, nah, early than that. Probably in the summer. By the end of summer, that's when they're going to get that shit a big push, and you finally going to see. But as of right now, 
me personally, anyway, I don't see none of this shit, bro. I really don't be seeing none of this shit over what the fuck is going on outside of the bullshit that they push to the forefront, which is the TikTok shit, the Trump getting arrested, and then just the the fucking uh brutal the police uh brutality and police interaction videos are starting to tick up again. And I know I definitely talked about this shit a uh, couple months ago, but every time it's about to be uh election or midterm election season they start with the police brutality videos all over your timeline and <clears throat> just all these different stories about all the sh- fucked up shit the police is doing so they can again do some political posturing as to the defund the police conversation comes around the gun reform comes around because they as of lately they've been doing some wild shit with this gun shit because i know in florida they just passed that uh you don't have to you don't have to have a concealed carry permit no more with the firearm you can just anybody if you got a firearm if you got a, a handgun you can just carry that shit now without any type of uh ccw or anything you can just tuck this shit and go on about your business and then in north carolina they just passed some shit where you don't have to have a uh 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 permit to purchase no more you can just walk in and they do the little background i guess they do the background check on spot now or i don't even i don't know how this shit work now but you ain't got to have a permit to purchase a handgun in north carolina no more you can just anybody over the age of was it 21 can go and purchase a handgun now uh as far as a concealed carry goes in north carolina i don't think they've updated that as of yet but nigga it's finna be the fucking wild wild west out here in a little bit like this shit is this shit is finna be out of hand but again it's directly related to it finna be uh it finna be uh election time so all all the laws and all this shit has got to be shuffled around and they got to one side got to drum up some bullshit to combat something that the other side is saying and it, it's it's a fucking headache my nigga it's it's, it's just finna be a fucking headache um but shit, let me see. Other than that, I really that's that that's really it. I'm I'm just I'm at two hours. Yeah, that's definitely gonna be it. The only thing I really got left anyway is fucking uh the Drake shit. So of course if you haven't heard by now, <clears throat> Drake had Drake released a song called uh Man, what is the name of this shit? I was just listening to it. Search and Rescue and in the song it features uh a snippet from uh kim kardashian talk kim kardashian on the keeping up with the kardashian shit where she's talking about getting a divorce from kanye and uh he sampled a piece of that so that was like a whole thing over the weekend or whatever but i just listened to it a few minutes ago or not a few minutes ago but a few minutes before i started recording and they updated or they (coughs) re-uploaded it because when they first put it out it was kind of like a unfinished rough version, but uh, they they put it they re-released it and put it out and uh, they fixed the they fixed the the sound of it because before it was kind of like a, a lo-fi kind of like a it it kind of sounded like a unofficial release type shit, but they did like I said they went in and redone the uh, the 